In previous videos, we've looked at how we can create the ArcGIS Pro project, upload a base map, be it topographical or imagery, and then use the zooming and panning tools to navigate around our data sets. We also looked at using the catalog pane to create a new feature data set that we called infrastructure that was going to house all of our feature, feature class information, or in this case, our polygons. So from then we went into editing what was going to be within our feature class using the create features and then also modifying some of those features if we wanted to merge some things together or split some things apart as well. So now's a really good time to remind you that if you haven't already saved your data, there's two different locations where we save. So first of all, if you've been creating and editing any of your feature classes, you will see that you've got a save button up here under the edit tab. So mine's grayed out because I have just saved. Now the second place that you're going to need to save is your project as a whole. So that's not just the information that's within your feature class, but it's how everything is displayed as well the zoom level and all of what you see within this project window as a whole. And so to save that, you need to come up and go to this upper left hand corner to save the project as a whole. So just remember there are those two locations to save both your features and save the complete project itself. So within this particular video, what we're going to look at doing is have a bit of a look at the data that sits behind what you see visually in terms of all of these shapes or the polygons on your map and look at how we can start to categorize each of those polygons so that they're not all just looking the same color, but we can visualize them differently as well because we know that we do have the green, blue and gray infrastructure incorporated there. So our building and car parks, our trees, and potentially some water features there as well. So first of all, let's look at what's called the attribute table, which is what holds all the information behind each of these shapes. So if I go over to right click on infrastructure in the table of contents, and I can go up to attribute table here. Now what we'll see is this is a table, so it just looks like a spreadsheet and it's got information based on every single shape that I have digitized that's sitting within that infrastructure feature class. So for example, I can click on any of these particular rows in the table and you'll see that it's highlighted or selected in that cyan color and you'll see the corresponding shape is selected up in my map view as well. So I can go along and find any of these shapes based on what I see in the table of contents or conversely, I could also use the select tool under the edit tab and select a particular shape or polygon here and see its information that's hidden behind it in the attribute table. Now the attribute table is really important because that's really what holds the information behind this visualization that we see. So at the moment, all that the attribute table is telling us is, is the object ID. So this is a unique identifier for each of the shapes. It's telling us what type of shape it is. So we know already that it's a polygon, but other options could be point or line. Then it's telling us the length of that shape and the shape's area. Now this is going to be important for us because one of my goals that I would like to see is just how much shade we have on the James Cook University Cairns campus. So to be able to do that, I'm going to want to be able to look at all the trees that we have and the area that's contained within those trees and sum it all up to get a complete calculation of what I have on campus. So that's why it's important to understand the length and, and the area as well. So these are what we call geospatial information. And this is why it's held within a geo database as opposed to just a database by itself. Now I'm just going to clear this selection so I can do it in one of two places. I can do it within the attribute table or I can do it as, as part of the shapes there up in the edit toolbar. Either way, it will clear both of those selections there. 
So you see, I don't have anything selected, which is great. And really what I want to start doing now is to have a look at some of the shapes that I've drawn. And instead of them all looking exactly the same, I want to put them into categories. So I want to start naming the shapes in terms of, I want to say that I have buildings, I have trees, I have car parks to start with. And obviously I haven't finished digitizing at this point, but it's still a good point that I can go to, to, to start getting some more information in this attribute table. So what I'm going to do first of all is you'll see in the attribute table we have these columns and so the columns being the object ID, shape, shape length and shape area. Now these are also called fields and we also have the rows so numbered down here on the left hand side and these are called records. Now what I'd like to do is to add another field in here that's going to tell me the type of polygon that I've digitized there and so in that it's going to be a building or trees or something like that. So to do that what I need to do is to come up to the add button here. Now if your add button is grayed out and it's not accessible for you to add a new field into the table just head on up under the edit tab and make sure you save any edits that you've recently done and once you've saved then it will allow you to add a new field there as well. So let's add that on in and first of all it's going to ask is the name of the field. So I'm simply going to say that's type and again I'm thinking that within this field I'm going to put in things like buildings or trees. So in that way I need to understand what data type it's going to be. So is it going to be a number or a text field or a date? So I'm going to click on this one and that's going to give me an option of any of those different types of, of data that we've got there. And so I have text. And so I'm happy that the, the maximum length within that field is 255 characters, which is going to be plenty for what I need. So that's all good. And all I need to do then is hit save. Now, if I wanted to add a new field at that time, so for example, may, maybe we're actually interested in also looking at the names of buildings given we're creating a map. Perhaps that's interesting to have the library labeled or the gym or anything like that. We can then go in and just add another new field if we like. And let's label that one name. And if we hit enter off that, then that will allow us to change that also to text and we'll keep that at 255 as well. So let's save that. And you'll see that as we do this, it starts to populate our attribute table with these new fields or new columns. So that's great. Let's, let's close that off up the top there and let's, let's come back and have a look at our map. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this particular feature here, which I know is a building. So if I select this one here, I should see it come up in my attribute table. Now I've got 47 polygons that I've digitized so I may need to scroll down to find it or another quicker way just to do that is down in the bottom left here you can see where it says show all records or show just the selected records so I can tap on show just the selected records and it's going to quickly show me that particular building there. Now the reason I want to do this is because I'm now going to tap in on this area where it says null and I'm going to say that that's a building. So I'm happy with that and if I knew the name of the building so that it was the library or whatever particular building it is I could write in that name as well. All right so let's go back to all of our records and clear the selection and we can go through and find other features that we're interested in looking at as well. Now perhaps this is a little bit hard given that all the all the polygons have been colored in so maybe it's a bit hard to see exactly what each feature is. So you could always make this a, a hollow polygon if you like. So it's just got the outlines of the polygons and that might make it a little bit easier to pick different features. So for example if I picked this one here let me select this particular polygon and come into my table to find this here. I would label this one trees, which is great. So I can go through and label each of these polygons that I've drawn, but obviously that's going to be a rather time consuming process. So if we were to do that, imagine picking out every single polygon 
and labeling each one it's going to take us a while given that you've seen I've got 47 polygons there and let's have a look we can also sort these to see which ones we've already labeled just to make sure that that's come through okay so if I double click on type there we'll see that the the building has been labeled and it maybe didn't save my label for the trees so I want to make sure that I type that one in again and I'll hit enter this time um, and tap off it and make sure that's definitely there but yes we've definitely got it now so we've got trees and buildings so that's great another thing that we could do potentially would be to select um, select a polygon here um, and hold the shift key and select another polygon you'll see I've now got two selected there and I could again type those in but again I I have to say that I am a little bit lazy and I like to do things in the fastest possible way so let's come back to our our full attribute table here and let's clear our selection and we'll be able to see all of the features that we've digitized here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a number of different buildings that I've that I've digitized. So I'm just holding the shift key as I go ahead and select each one. If they're all next to each other, I could just draw out a bounding box and that would do the same job. But let's say I've, I've picked out all of my buildings there and I'm quite happy with the buildings that I've done. And so you, you can see I've selected 12 buildings. Now I don't want to manually type in building 12 times for each of those things. So let's have a look at a faster way that I'm able to populate that field with the label building there as well. So if you right click on the on the field up the top there, so I'm going to right click on type and then go out to calculate field. So this is going to bring up the geoprocessing window and this is what's going to make it really easy for me to label each of those cells within the type that I'm going to label that as building. So we'll just double check that we're, we're, everything's all good here. We're working with the infrastructure table um, and the field name is type there. So if we scroll down here, you'll come to the box where it says type equals. Now I need to use inverted commas here, so I'm going to use both the open and the close inverted commas. And then in between the two of those, I'm going to type building. And then once I've done that, I'm going to hit run. And you'll see that it comes up with a little information dialog and you'll see that every single cell there that has been highlighted is now called building. So that's great, I'm quite happy with that. That was a nice fast way to label my buildings. Now perhaps I wanna go through and do the same sort of thing for my, for my vegetation. So let's have a look here and find some of these blocks of trees. And this time I'm just going to change where it says building, I'm just gonna change that to trees and run that. And we see that rapidly change over in the in the attribute table as well. Now once I've got all of my features identified there, then I'm just going to go up to clear all of the attributes that are selected for this particular one. So you'll see nothing in the in the selected attributes in the attribute table and everything's nice and clear out of our map view as well. Now I can just double check that I have actually labeled everything by going to my attribute table and I might just double click on the type field and notice that I have actually missed a number of these of these attributes so I might want to go into those and label them as well so I'll do that in a moment but what I wanted to do in the meantime is to now look at how we can actually visualize each of these different features based on how it's been named so if we head over to infrastructure again over in the attribute table and right click on infrastructure and go to symbology. Now what we're going to do is instead of using a single symbol this time, let's pull that down to unique values. And what we're going to do is instead of using the, the shape length as it suggests here as the default, 
we're going to color our different polygons based on the type of polygon they are. So be it building or trees, walkways, etc. So you can see that automatically assigns a color scheme to it. And then of course you can go in and change any of those color patches that you want to make it aesthetically pleasing for the map that you're creating. And once you're happy with what you've got, you can just minimize or cancel that symbology window there and you can continue doing any digitizing or edits in the attribute table as well. So really what we've looked at here is looking at the attribute table or the information behind the shapes that we're dealing with, how you can add fields and add information into the attribute table both as single features but then also as multiple features using using the calculate field function as well and finally using the symbology tool to be able to visualize based on a category that we've looked at here now's a good time also to save the edits that you've that you've made to your attribute table so we'll hit on save for that one and then also make sure that you save the project as a whole.